Well, here we are, folks. This is Brother Peter with Tidbits from the Word. I start in no specific place this morning in a big sense of the Word. This is the first day of 2016. Hey, did I, as a Christian, fail in the year 2015? I have to tell you right now, miserably did I fail in 2015. We have, I've been uh, in a kind of a stressful year in a sense of the word, especially spiritually. Uh, I lost the key to the church. Uh, I now, as far as the uh, being able to walk into the place just anytime I want, 24 sevens, I can't do that. I'm an outsider in my own church in a sense of the word that uh, my spiritual ability to go in and walk through the gym and just pray and say, Lord, what a beautiful thank you, you know, and the ability to do that. That's not happened this year. That happened la didn't happen last year, may never happen again. But, uh, but that's through failure of my part. I lost three keys, and by losing three keys, I have X'd myself out of being a key holder. And I probably never will be a key holder again. I'm glad that God does not do that to me because I kind of, in a big sense of the word, I've lost the keys to uh, what is uh, proper in my life in the workings of a spiritual life. I uh, got uh, waylaid this year in, uh, in 2015, got waylaid with uh, things that uh, of the house even that caused uh, me to not do what I was supposed to do. All of those things, though, are trivial excuses. They're all excuses from the human aspect. And I'm, I've been kind of like uh, uh, a, a billy goat looking over the fence at somebody else's pasture and uh, not taking care of my own pasture. We've got to take care of our own pasture. I've got to take care of my own pasture. I was listening this morning as I was studying early. I was listening to a song that I very, very seldom ever put any kind of music on anything while I'm teaching or preaching or studying. But I want to go through into chapter 5 of Psalms. In chapter 5 of Psalms, David had had a tough life. And he had had a tough time. And he was uh, dwelling on some things that were causing him great difficulty. And he had to get back out of that dwelling. Now, sometimes when David speaks of his enemy here, he's not talking about the people in the area around him that have come against him. He's talking about the situations. He's talking about the things in his own life that have uh, tr been uh, tr a trouble to him. And he has not been able to I come through that. Listen to it. Give ear to my words, O Lord, consider my meditation. I want you to know this first day of 2016, this is Brother Peter. I'm praying this prayer to God this morning as David did. Verse 2, hearken unto my voice of my cry, my King and my God, for unto thee will I pray. Unto thee, O God, I am praying this morning unto God that he will hearken to my voice. Help me to get out of my complacency. Help me to get out of the place where I am. How, how many uh, tracks did you pass out yesterday, Brother Peter? I did a one-on-one -on -one deal with a man yesterday. And other than that, did I do anything spiritual? I worked on a fence all day. I listened to a uh, tape or two. Uh, I tried to hear last night laying in bed some good preaching. And this morning I was woke up by a man telling me that I need to get the Canaanites out of my life. As I listened to uh, Dr. Adrian Rogers preach this morning, he preached, get the Canaanites out of your life. Uh, my life is full of Canaanites. I go down and tended the fire this morning early. And when I went down and tended the fire, 
I, I pick up wood and I got ants on my hand. They just covered up the wood. The rain has drove them up out of the ground and they're everywhere. And that's how my life has been. It's like I've been a life this year full of Canaanites. I have faced in the school that I'm going to in Titus Baptist Seminary. I have faced my own self, my own inability to be able to write the papers and spell like I ought to. I write every day. But it's a difference between what I write for myself and what I write that somebody may could uh, cipher out the hieroglyphics that I put down uh, someday, but that uh, when I turn in a paper, it I can't I can't do the 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 physical work of it, and so that's been a big a big drawback for me. But if if you're listening to me today, brother Peter, you get yourself number five of Psalms open. And you repent and you tell God that you're going to just do the best you can do. This is all I'm going to do from now on. I'm going to just do the best I can do. And I'm not going to let it keep me from saying, uh, I just need to get drop on out of here because I'm just not capable of handling this work. And and what it, and it's not me. By the way, uh, Brother Dennis Fire is the most graceful human being in the world when it comes to the paperwork. He's given a great grace to the majority of us who are not educated enough to be able to turn in the papers when and where we ought to. So let's just get all of that behind us from our 2015 worry and, and stress on, in this school about not being able to get that part of it done. Now to come listen to the fellows that are uh, before us, that are teaching us, that are talking to us, that are telling us the things they're telling us. They have had to come through these struggles too. By the way, and they're not through them ever. Never will they ever be through them. As long as there's life in this body and breath in this body, we will have those Canaanites around. Those are the things. You remember the Canaanites came from all sides. They troubled the Israelites continually trouble to Israel. We have Canaanites in our life that continually trouble us. I'm going to put that behind this year. I'm going to put that down this year. I'm going to say no more with that. So here we are in verse 4. For thou art not a God that has pleasure in wickedness, neither shall evil dwell with thee. Have I had some wickedness in my life? Yes, I have. If I'm God's person, and I'm not doing what God said to do. That's wickedness. And that you say, well, Brother Peter, how can you get away from that wickedness? You could do what I'm doing today, right now, this morning, the very first day of 2016. And I'm doing it publicly. I'm repenting. God, forgive me for those many things. Some of them I can point right out and know. Some of them I would not tell anybody about because... I know want to repeal, uh, reveal the wickedness that sometimes is in this mind and in this heart that belongs to God that I allow to come in. So let's get rid of that. Listen to verse five: The foolish shall not stand in thy sight. Thou uh, uh, hatest all works of iniquity. I have been foolish in 2015. I have done works of iniquity. What are works of iniquity? You know one of the works of iniquity that you can see? Look back at yesterday. How much Bible did you read yesterday, Brother Peter? I'm asking myself that question. How much Bible did you read yesterday, Brother Peter? Well, let's look in my mind's eye. I got up early at four daylight and got prepared to work to do work on a fence, to do some work that I had to do it was before me. Did you open your Bible and read it? No, no, I didn't. Well, did you pray? N not really. Not really. I, I prayed in my mind, but did you stop and, and give God some time? No, no, I didn't. Did you listen to some preaching in the morning? Yes, I did that. I've, whoa, that's one plus. But did you do anything else through the day until you went to bed at night and put on another tape and started listening again and studying? No, I didn't. I worked all day. I fevered. I, f I favored. I did things. I did this and that. 
Did you get a chance to talk to anybody about the Lord? A couple of people, a couple. What is your norm? Many. So therefore you, you failed that day. You have been a failure as a Christian that day. And uh, those failures are iniquity because they're separating you from God. And they're not giving you the peace that you need. I need peace this morning. I need the peace of God in my life this morning. I had to hunt for the book of Psalms this morning. To me, that's a spiritual failure to have to hunt for a book in the Bible where I know exactly where it is. Normally can put my finger right in and open up to it. I had to hunt for it today. And look, that's not good. Let's look at verse 6. Thou shalt destroy them that speak leasing, and the Lord will abhor the bloody and deceitful man. Now, Brother Peter, you say, what is leasing? Leasing is some of the things I just did. What I just said and what I just did. What is that? That's leading people to believe that I'm so spiritual that I don't fall off over here or do that or do this or do that. That's leasing. That's leading the wrong way. Saying, well, I'm, you know, look at me as a godly man. And that's not true. I am a man of God and I am God's man. But am I a godly man? Not on your life. I'm just like David was. Even though David's heart panted after God, my heart pants after God. But my physical being is a Canaanite being against God. It wants to do what it wants to do. It wants to, to do a, a different than what God would have it do. And therefore, that's what it does. And it does that. And so, here we are in verse 7. But as for me, I will come unto thy house in the multitude of thy mercies. And in thy fear will I worship toward thy holy temple. Wow, I've been studying lately behind David Jeremiah and he talked about God told the children of Israel to look toward Jerusalem when they prayed. The only way I can look toward Jerusalem from here is to look just directly toward God who is my Jerusalem. He is the city that I want to dwell in. He is Jerusalem. He is the place I want to dwell in. But in the physical Jerusalem that you and I know today, there are so many Canaanites in that city, it's unreal. What do you mean by a Canaanite, Brother Peter? Anything that's opposite from God that comes down on them is a Canaanite against God. And, and the Canaanites are there. Every sect in the world is in Jerusalem and coming against God. Let's look at verse 8. Lead me, O Lord, in thy righteousness. Because of mine enemies, make thy way straight before my face. The enemies I worry about are not people. They're not my neighbors. They're not somebody that doesn't like me. They're not somebody I owe a bill to. They're not anything other than what is in the personal human flesh. The enemies of my, of, of Brother Peter Hutchins, the enemies of me is in me is in this brain, in this life. And they are the enemies of sitting down in front of the television and watching a stupid judge that's not even proper setting in that courtroom talk about people and do people and try to say, I'm going to judge this situation and the judge himself needs judging. And that's me. If I'm going to judge others, and I need, I'm the one that needs judging. The Bible says, judge not, lest you be judged. Remember, every single time we've got a finger pointing out, we've got three fingers pointing back. Let's get ourselves right this year, 2016. Let's get on our knees in our closet and say, God, I am going to be yours, and I'm going to be yours all the way, every day. And when I think a bad thought, I'm going to get my eyes back into my own pasture. What is my pasture? This is the green pasture. We're going to talk about it in a couple minutes. The green pasture that we need to be in. 
If we'll stay in our green pasture, our own pasture, keep our eyes off of the other man's field. And by the way, the other man's field belongs to the devil. Remember that. It's not yours to be in. Let's look at uh, verse 9. For there is no faithfulness in their mouth. Their inward part is very wickedness. Their throat is as an open sepulchre, and they flatter with their tongues. Now we are a threefold person. I am a threefold person. I am me, myself, and I. My I wants to belong to God. My me wants to belong to myself. And myself is an enemy against the I up here, God. So here's myself fighting me to do opposite from what the I, I want to do, which I want to follow God. So me, myself, and I, I am a three-group uh, person. And this three-group person is at war with itself. I love it. Dr. Rice used to, be, used to say, uh, if you've got two dogs, a black one and a white one, in your life, how are you going to have peace of mind? A black and white dog going to fight each other all the time. How are you going to have peace of mind? Well, you're going to have to feed the white dog. And if you feed the white dog, the white dog will win all the time. The black dog will lay down in the corner and mind his own business because he knows he's not going to make it if he gets up. And so you've got to feed that white dog. Well, i got to tell you, this year I have fed two dogs. I have fed the black dog and the white dog. And here I am sitting before you today, this morning, 2016, with a fight inside of me of two dogs. They're fighting this morning. They're fighting. Have I fed the white one enough this year to win? Just barely. Just barely has the white dog had enough to win this morning. Just barely. And, and how did you say, well, how did that happen, Brother Peter? And it happened by being lax. We, we got out of school. We got out of church. We've been out of church. Uh, uh, it seems like a year. Well, almost almost to the place to where we say, well, <clears throat> I don't know. Maybe I won't even go back. Uh, well, we've just been out too much. We've been out. We, we, we've uh, failed. And by failing there, we, we've caused ourselves some grief. We've let our uh, dogs lay down and sleep for a little bit. Haven't been like, like Brother Dennis. He warned us about this. He, Brother Dennis warned us when we left the class for three weeks. He warned us of what's going to happen. You are going to have a battle. You are going to have a war. You are going to have a fight. He says, keep up your homework. Keep up your homework. Keep up your homework. Keep up your homework. Well, I got news for you. Me, myself, and I, me wants to watch TV. And myself, I want to just do nothing sometime. Nothing. And I says, if you don't take care of these two down here and keep them in the Word, get the study done, get the Word done, get your papers written, get your stuff done, you're going to be in real trouble. And now here I am sitting here, 2016, somewhere around uh, 5.30 uh, in the morning, and I'm in a muddle. What's the muddle? The muddle is I can't sleep. Got to get up early. Got to get. Got to get repented. I'm getting repented. You are listening to Brother Peter repenting today. I am repenting from 2015 and saying it's behind me, God. But listen to what God said. He loved me no matter what. Listen to verse 10. Destroy thou them, O God. Let them fall by their own counsel. Cast them out in the multitude of their transgressions. For they have rebelled against thee. Now, I'm not talking about other people. I'm talking about what's in Brother Peter. The things that have rebelled against God. God cast them out of me. Help me, my I part of me, the me, myself, and I, to help the I part of me to tell myself that I need to quit doing things that would come in, those Canaanite things that would come in and trouble me and give me this trouble. Verse 11, But let all those that put their trust in thee rejoice. Let them ever shout for joy, because thou defendest them 
let them also that love thy name be joyful in thee. I'm asking God this morning for my joy back. God, I want my joy back. I don't want to sit in front of a television and watch a TV program for an hour and be miserable in my life because I know that's not what I need to be doing. Well, what do you need to be doing? I need to be doing something besides that. I could be in the Bible. I could be in the, a prayer closet. I could walk over to my neighbor's house and talk to him about the Lord. Or just walk over and just be cordial and just talk with him for a bit. I could do something. I could get away from what the devil would draw me to. If you believe the devil's drawing you to it, then it's not God. It's the devil. And if he's drawing you to it, get away from it. Let's look at verse 12. For thou, O Lord, wilt bless the righteous with favor, wilt thou compass him <laughs> as with a shield. Wow! Do you know that I've got a shield against the devil that I don't even have to hold in my hand. I'm putting it up now. I'm putting the invisible shield against the devil up now, which is God. God, deliver me from the past. Deliver me from the past year. Deliver me from those failures. Deliver me from those things that, that troubled me, that caused me to not follow you. Deliver me 100% from that. Lord, restore my soul today. Make me new. And I'm going to go now to Psalm 23. And in Psalm 23, where it says, The Lord, the Lord that I'm talking about, the Lord I'm asking today to uh, change my life again. You say, how many times have you done that, Brother Peter, since you got saved in 1972, November 5th, 3 o'clock in the morning, and you're saying now, and this is 2016, 40 years later, and you're repenting? Yes. Repenting is a daily thing. Repenting of our physical, spiritual, mental failures every day is, a, is an everyday thing. I love the fact one of the most righteous men in the whole world was 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 uh, 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 Jonathan, Joseph, and Daniel. Daniel prayed three times a day, morning, noon, and night. Got in his window and prayed. This was not a lazy man. This was a working man. He was one of the chiefs. He was the first, one of the first of three presidents in his time. First time the word was mentioned. He's one of the first three. A president. He had 120 under him that he was over, that, that he had to uh, rule and reign. Yet he walked to his prayer room, which was upstairs, and he got in the window and he looked toward Jerusalem and he prayed three times a day. He took the time to have God first. That's why he was the leader he was. He was in a heathen nation, and he's a, he's a total Christian man ruling in a heathen nation. And respected by everybody because of the fact that he did faithfully worship his God. And you can, if you faithfully worship your God, even your enemy one day is going to lay down and say, hey, if I need something, I can go ask Brother Peter because he's faithful. Have I been faithful in 2015? Absolutely not. I have not been the faithful person that I have needed to be. I'm repenting today. I'm saying, Lord, forgive me. I want to be faithful. I want to be faithful. I want to come out. I want to get the reproaches off from me. And I've been working on that. The Lord is my Shepherd, listen to this music. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me by still waters. He restored my soul. 
He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. My God is still on the throne. I listened to this song this morning. And God is saying to me, His will. I need His will in my life today. I need it to be the best in my life. Today. Not yesterday, but today. Right now. And He's still on the throne. He's still the same one leading us by the still waters. He restoreth my soul, leadeth me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. When Jesus came, wow, I was listening to that this morning, and it's my life. Sometimes I gave up. Yeah. <laughs> he says, he's still on the throne. All we got to do is recognize him. Don't forget who your king is in your life. You let him be on the throne in your life. And you'll be able to come out. You'll be able to do as I'm doing right now, today. Get your repentance out. Repent. And say, God, straighten me out. Put me back where I need to be this year. Make me be the witness I need to be. Listen, you won't win a soul this year if you continue to live in your backslid condition. I have no doubt that if I'm talking to somebody out there today, anybody, they don't happen to have to be necessarily be in Titus Baptist Seminary. They can just be any regular person. And they've lost the fact that Jesus is still on the throne. And he's still there today for you and I. Very seldom do I ever do a piece of music with that. But that little old uh, three or four minute piece of music spoke to me great this morning. And said, who's on your throne, Brother Peter? Are you sitting on your own throne or is God sitting on your throne this morning, 2016? Is God sitting on your throne? Look, let me finish up with him. He restored my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Verse 4. How long? Will we stay in the valley of the shadow of death? We will stay there as long as we don't realize we are there. When we realize that's where we are, we can start moving out of it. We can start moving out of it. Do you know that every time a man moved his sheep in the, back in the Old Testament, and still even today, when he goes from one mountainside to that green pasture he can see on that other mountainside, he has to pass through that valley of the shadow of death. He may find a little green grass down there, but he better not stop and eat it. He better continue on over and get on up the other side. Because while he's down in that valley, even though there's a little green grass, if he stops and eats it, the bear will get him. The lion will get him. I guarantee you when David fought the bear and David fought the lion, he was in the valley. He was in the valley. The lions and the, the bears knew when they came through the valley they're in danger. There's rocks and creeks and water and they have to slow down. There's no good place to get rest. There's no good place to get out in the open pasture where you can see the bear coming. Where you can see the lion coming. The bear and the lion can hide behind the rocks. Can do things. Can come in and get you. If you are in the valley, get out of the valley. Get out of the valley today. Get out of there. Get in the green pasture. Thou prepares the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Anoints my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord 
forever. My friend, we are going to dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So you need to get into the house of the Lord. Start dwelling where you belong. And if that's where you belong, get in there and quit doing what you've been doing. We'll see you next time. Brother Peter with Tidbits from the Word. Bye-bye.